please welcome to the stage the Secretary of the Department of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg. Good afternoon. Have we made it to afternoon? We have. Uh, and I hope it's been a good one for you here. I can tell you this entire administration has been looking forward to this gathering, and it is great to be united with friends that I have got to know in my travels and those who uh, I'm having a chance to be with for the first time. Uh, I want to begin by acknowledging that we are on the ancestral homelands of the Cochetank and Acostan and Piscataway people. And I want to thank our hosts, Secretary Holland and Director Tandon, for making this Tribal Nation Summit possible as well as acknowledge Secretary Jennifer Granholm, with whom I have the great honor of co-chairing the Energy and Infrastructure Committee as part of the White House Council on Native American Affairs. And most importantly, I want to thank all of you, all of the tribal leaders joining us here for this important gathering. Under President Biden's leadership, we are now engaged in a once-in-a-generation effort to rebuild infrastructure across Indian country and across the United States of America. And we can't do that, we certainly can't do it right without your continued partnership. I hope you can feel that this administration is firmly and sincerely committed to honoring tribal sovereignty, upholding our solemn trust and treaty responsibilities, and empowering tribal self-governance, which is why conversations like those taking place at this summit are so important. As Secretary of Transportation, I've had the great honor and privilege of meeting dozens, if not hundreds, of tribal leaders in every corner of the country, from South Dakota to Arizona to Alaska. I've gotten to visit Indian country, had the honor of speaking at gatherings like NCAI, the Intertribal Transportation Association, and the National Transportation in Indian Country Conference. And this year, I asked many of the key leaders at our department, including several of our modal administrators and our assistant secretaries, to attend the NTICC in Anchorage. And the reason I sought that is that our work on tribal transportation issues ranges across every form of travel, from the bridges that we are working to rebuild that are often the only way into or out of a tribal community, to the expansion of ferry service for remote Alaska native villages. In other words, it's important that every part of the DOT works on behalf of and for the benefit of tribes. And it is equally important that tribes have a chance to work with and at every part of the US DOT. So I am proud to announce that in March of next year, we will be hosting our first ever tribal job fair at the US DOT. We're opening the doors to tribal colleges and universities so that students can learn about how they can join in the work that we are doing to rebuild roads and bridges, ports and airports, trains and transit across every part of America, including tribal communities. We know that we will be better off for their talents and there will be wonderful opportunities for them in service. Just this month, we opened applications for one of the first hires in our newly created Office of Tribal Affairs. And in the months and years ahead, we will need to continue filling hundreds of positions across every part of DOT. As the original keepers of America's natural landscape, it seems only fitting that Nat Native Americans should be shaping the future of this country's physical infrastructure for the better. And we know from experience that our efforts to rebuild transportation infrastructure are only as good as the engagement and the inclusion that informs them is why we're stepping up our engagement with tribes. It's why this May we swore in Orlando Teller as our first ever Assistant Secretary of Tribal Affairs. It's why our new Office of Tribal Affairs opened its doors in October. It's why we updated our tribal consultation policy for the first time in nearly a quarter of a century to make sure that tribal leaders get to weigh in on DOT policies that affect tribal citizens. And it is why next year we will be continuing our new tradition of hosting tribes at DOT for symposia on tribal aviation, tribal transit, and tribal maritime travel. And we're not just committed to stepping up engagement, we are delivering concrete results. Since the last time I had the honor of speaking at the Tribal Nations Summit, we have continued our work to ensure that tribal residents have safe 
affordable, accessible ways to get around, guided by the ideas and the input that we have gotten from tribes themselves through conversations like those we're having today. This summer, we awarded grants to improve road safety in 88 tribal communities, ranging from the Cushata tri tribe of Louisiana to Michigan's Bay Mills Indian community to the native village of Noatuck, one of many tribes whose members I had a chance to meet with while in Alaska a few months ago. We also opened applications for $220 million to modernize ferry service and to better connect rural and tribal communities, mindful of the fact that it makes a huge difference. Yeah, we can, uh, we can hear it for that. <laughs> because you can't come away from some of those travels we've had in Indian country without it being impressed upon you how many communities experience ferries not as some option or luxury, but as the way to get to work or to go to school or to reach urgently needed medical care. We're close to issuing a final rule to modernize our disadvantaged business enterprise program, which works to ensure that businesses like Native American owned businesses have a fair chance at federal contracts. We reestablished our six regional tribal technical assistance centers, updated our EV toolkit with tribal specific resources, delivered nearly $200 million to fix culverts for fish in communities where people depend on fishing for their livelihoods, and launched our Thriving Communities Program to ensure that underserved communities and tribal nations get the technical assistance they need and deserve to secure federal funding for transportation projects. And of course, we also funded dozens more tribal transportation projects through tr grant programs that don't necessarily have the word tribal in the name of the programs, but where tribal communities have done quite well, including our RAISE program, which is opening for submissions again very soon, and we urge you to take a good look at that opportunity. And though it might not seem like uh, an example of the type that, uh, uh, that I've just named, there's something else I want to mention. This October, we shared messages from our road safety campaign at the Native Language Summit. And we asked tribes to translate those messages into their native languages. Some of those languages that are spoken by just a double digit number of people and that are so important to keep alive. And then we asked the communities to send those translations back to us. We will maintain those translations on our systems and on our website in perpetuity, giving future language learners one more place to look, one more resource to reference and helping to protect these endangered languages. I mention that because I know that as much as we look to the future, memory is also a very important part of this work. This is a president and an administration who understand that to be the right kind of partners to tribal nations today, we have to reckon with our inheritance and the past of this government's treatment of tribal nations. It's why we begin with land acknowledgments. It's why we're stepping up these engagement efforts mindful of where they didn't happen in the past. It's why we're working so hard to improve safety and accessibility when it comes to tribal transportation, mindful that those transportation systems were sometimes allowed to fall into disrepair because of federal neglect. We look to the future mindful of the past. Policymaking is about the relationship between the past, the present, and the future. And no one has a more compelling vision for how to get that right than the kinds of tribal leaders who are here today. So please know that for as long as President Biden is in the White House, you will have an ally in the federal government and at the Department of Transportation. I want to thank you again for joining us today, for your continued partnership as we work to deliver better, stronger, and safer infrastructure across Indian country and across America. And I can't wait to see what we will achieve together going forward. Thank you again for the chance to be with you. Thanks very much.